Let's see how we can render out an animation from Das Studio. Hello everyone, I'm Jay, and on this channel we're helping you become better 3D artists with Das Studio. On today's episode, I want to show you how to render out a whole animation that you've made inside Das Studio. It's a little tricky, it's a little involved, and I wanted to make you aware of some pitfalls and also show you some post-production that you can do with your rendered image sequence. So I'm back with Josie and we've made her camera animation in the previous episode. Now we're ready to render this thing out. So the first thing we need to do is head over to the render settings tab and tell Das Studio that we in fact want to render an animation. We want to make absolutely sure we're only rendering this. So I'm going to go and switch over to window viewports and put that back to a single view. And then I'll head over to my render settings tab again. The first thing that we want to have a look at probably is the image dimensions. I've set it up to be a square and in this case I'm rendering it at 1200 by 1200 but it entirely depends on how fast you want your animation to render. You might not want to render the first pass in IRA at all so make sure you change this to something appropriate for final render the larger the better but for a small preview render you can make this as small as 400 or maybe 600. This strip at the top here where it says engine this is set to nvidia iray by default but you can change this over and this is important to remember that iray means it's the high quality render engine that takes a while to put a really good looking image together but for animations we might sometimes want to look at timing first and we're happy with something that doesn't look so good we just need to see it in its full beauty before we make a decision of is this something I want to spend time rendering on. So click on that and then you can see other options here. 3D Lite is the CPU renderer. We have 3D Lite and scripted 3D Lite. And we have a couple of options at the top here, which is viewport and multi-pass OpenGL. Multipass OpenGL is looks a bit like the texture shaded view and it renders a lot faster, but it also comes with all the inaccuracies that we see in the viewport sometimes. When you switch this to viewport, Das Studio will in fact use whatever you've selected here. So in my case, that's filament. If you do want to render out in filament, then this is the way to go. And then switch this to filament if you have it. If it's not available on your system, you can change this to any of the other modes. So if you wanted to render something in wireframe, for example, you can do that. I'm going to leave mine in filament because as a little preview test render, this is probably a great idea to show this. I'm going to go and set the size down to something smaller, like 500 by 500. And then further down here, I have the render type and that is set to still image by default. And this means if we press the blue button here, the render button or press control R, Das Studio will render the exact frame that we're on right now. If I drop this down, I get two other options here, image series and movie. And image series is really what I would recommend for the final render. It'll create an image of either type PNG or JPEG or TIFF or BMP. And it will give you a series that you need to compile in an image editor. The advantage is that it preserves all full quality. The other advantage is that should that studio crash halfway through a long running animation, all frames that have been rendered up until that point are safe and all the ones that you need to render after that can just be rendered without interfering with the first part. It also allows you to spread your render load over multiple computers. So image sequence is definitely what I would recommend. The downside is that you will need to have a tool to compile that into a video. And not everyone wants to do that. Not everybody has that, but it does allow you full quality and also post-production aspects. The other option that you have is to change this to movie. And that will technically also render an image sequence, but that studio is going to compile them into an AVI or a QuickTime at the end of it. Let me show you both options. So with our filament animation, I'm going to make a movie here. And this lets me pick a start and an end frame here. I can go and give my movie a name as well as an extension. On Windows, we only have AVI. I'm going to call that one test and I will put it on my desktop. This is where the movie path is. So this is a destination wherever you want that movie to appear. And now I'm ready to rock. I can go and click render. And then I'll wait and you'll see how fast filament browses through the timeline here. And there we have it. You don't really see a progress bar while Das Studio renders the animation in this mode in filament, but you can watch the timeline playhead go to the very end. And once it reaches that, the animation is rendered. Now it's not quite saved yet. So we have this little dialogue that pops up here. And that is something that Windows technically brings up because it's saying, hey, I'm trying to save this as a video and I need to apply some kind of compression codec so that you can actually watch it and share. It depends on how many codecs are installed on your system. I'm going to go and use the one that was suggested here. 
but you can also scroll to the bottom and choose full frames for uncompressed and best quality if you want to recompress it later or do post-production on this. Notice that this is going to result in a really, really large file, but at the best image quality that Windows can provide. Intel YUV is kind of okay. I'm just going to go click OK. And that is now all the images being compressed into that video. Let me go and check it out. Here it is on the desktop. Let me double click it and have a look at it. And here it is. And that's what's been rendered out with filament literally in front of our very eyes. I can switch looping on here. Then the animation will play multiple times and I can check is this the kind of timing that I like. And imagine I'm happy I can go ahead and render this now in iRay if I wanted to. Now, one thing that you can do while you're rendering, especially preview animations out, you can render this with less frames. So I've timed it so that it would look good with 30 frames a second. But if you wanted to have a quicker preview render, you can decrease the amount of frames that are being rendered. So we've rendered 30 frames per second. So in our case, all 150 frames were rendered. And that is set down here under FPS. If I set this to something lower, like say 10, then notice what happens to all the key frames on my timeline, they seem to have changed. So not so much the keyframe, but the timing of the keyframes. So I'm still at frame zero here, but at the end of my timeline, I now see that my last frame is frame 49. So I now have 50 frames that are being rendered. So this is the way that you can now render 50 frames out that takes you much less time and might even be faster. It also means the motion isn't as fluid, but for a preview, that might be totally what you're looking for. Likewise, if you're thinking, hey, it's time for the final render. I've timed my animation to look good at 30 frames a second, but really I want to use something like 60 frames a second. You can increase that to something like 60 or even 120 frames and the same thing happens. So now that's we would have to render twice as many frames as I've just rendered, and that would take obviously twice as long. Let me show you how to render an image sequence so that you can then go and compile these in an external tool to preserve the fullest quality. Let me go and leave this at 500, just for our example. I'm going to head over here to the engine where it says viewport, and I'm going to change that to NVIDIA iRay because it's now time for my final high class render. And maybe I want to do this in 1200 by 1200. Then, of course, with iRay, we have other considerations to make, like how much time do I want my computer to spend on a per frame basis? So I would recommend you use the progressive rendering option here, turn the render quality off, so disable that, and change the max samples to anywhere between as low as 50 to some Thing between 50 and 500, maybe 1,000. It really depends on how fast your computer is. But try lower values first, try single images first, and time how long it takes for one frame to be rendered. And then you can go and multiply that by the amount of frames that you have in your animation. And then you can derive an estimate of how long it's going to take in total. So animations, they do tend to take a while. So do early testing before you hit the render button and render the whole sequence out, just for your own sanity's sake, really. So I'll say 100 iterations, and so that I can avoid grain, I'm also going to use my denoiser here. That's under filtering. I'm going to go and enable the denoiser. This is what it looks like by default. You have to make the post denoiser available first, and then this next menu comes up, and you have to switch the post denoiser enable on so that you avoid noise in your renders. This is also true for still images, but especially for animations, this is going to save you a lot of hassle. Now comes the part with the still images, so that's back on the general tab. We're going to change this from movie over to image series. Now I can pick an image format. I always recommend you use the PNG format because that retains the transparency that lets you add backgrounds to your image sequence later. Give it a name. So I might call this Josie V2 hyphen, just, just my naming convention. And I'm going to give it a series path here. I'm going to go and put this perhaps on my desktop, or if you're rendering with multiple computers, use something like a cloud folder like Dropbox or OneDrive or Google Drive and position your images in there. If you're rendering from multiple systems, then you can bring them all together on one computer. I'll call this Josie Demo. I'll select my folder, say select folder, and now Dash Studio is going to render out this whole image sequence into here. If you wanted to render only part of the image sequence, you can type that here under render range. So I could say, hey, don't render the whole thing, render it only from frame zero to frame 50 or frame 100. And then that would, this instance of Dash Studio would do that. If you had a second computer, it could now go ahead and render frame 101 to frame 200. And a third computer can do the rest of the animation. That's how I usually work. 
And now that we're done, we can go and press render. And then you won't see a preview image that you usually get for stills images. Das Studio is going to do this under the hood. It'll still give you the status reports here. And once it's done with one image, it'll go and move the playhead forward and render the next image. But the viewport is going to stay the same. And this is going to take as long as it'll take. I don't have to render my image sequence out anymore because I've already done it. It's a bit like a cooking show. Here's one we prepared earlier. You have two options to compile your image sequence into a rendered movie. Photoshop can do it. Adobe Premiere and other video editors can do it. I'm sure there's other free tools on the internet, but I'm using the Adobe Suite. So I'll show you one way in Photoshop and another one in Adobe Premiere. It's really convenient, actually. It's almost like opening a regular image under File, Open. I'm going to go navigate to where I have my previous image sequence, which is here under Josie. I'm going to select the first frame of my animation, not all of them, just the first one. And then I'll take this unsuspecting option down here, which says image sequence. So I'll let Photoshop know this is in fact the image sequence. Hit open and then it'll work a little while. It'll ask me what's the frame rate of this project. We I rendered this out at 30 frames a second earlier. The demo wasn't 60, but this one is 30. And then there we have it. It's like a single image at the moment. So it appears as if, well, I don't see any motion here. And Photoshop isn't great at preview motion but it's great at compiling the motion and letting you make changes to it while you're there at the bottom here i have the timeline if i double click it then in fact i do get a timeline that opens and this has a little playhead that i can move through and there i see my animation which is great it is with a transparent background so that allows me to replace it if i wanted to in fact i will do that the video group here is my footage so i'm going to go and create a new layer below this group and that will be my background layer i'll do that with this little yin yang icon here i'll just pick a dark red something like this just for now and then i'll left click and drag that underneath my video group and now josie has a red background and if i go and press play then the preview speed isn't great but you can see this little blue bar here that's photoshop busy rendering and caching images so once it does this again it can probably play this back a little bit more fluid there we go now we see it in 30 frames a second you can make other adjustments to this you can add images into the background you could duplicate this layer left click and drag and that would just go and create a duplicate right here in the timeline as many times as you like and that will now let photoshop literally interpolate this for longer also <laughs> the background obviously needs to be longer now as well so you can go and extend that so there's all kinds of video capabilities that photoshop actually has play around with layer effects here put a vignette on something like that give her a little vignette bit of a more interesting background here you can do all these things once it's time to render your project out you can head over to file export render to video and when you do that another ever so slightly scary window comes up. It's almost like the Adobe Media Encoder. You select an output folder here. Perhaps I'm going to use my desktop for this. I'm going to give it a title, call it Josie. And then you can pick a compression format here. H.264 is fine. And then you can pick one of many quality presets. Let's leave it on high quality. And you can even change the frame size on output here. And once you're done, hit render. And then Photoshop will go ahead and compile this as a video that you can share on social media. Most video editors can handle image sequences, so Premiere Pro is one of those. All you need to do is create a new project. I might put it on the desktop and call it animation. And once we're in this interface here, I need to import my footage. And that is something that is very similar to importing other video clips. You can right click here, hit over to import and then import this whole image sequence. Once again, just like in Photoshop, click the first image, select image sequence at the bottom, hit open and that is now your video clip. Double click it to open it and look at it. My projects are all set up to assume a 60 frame frame rate when they come in. So in this case, Adobe Premiere didn't really ask. So I'm going to have to correct it once I make the sequence out of it. So new sequence out of that. That is my my actual editable sequence, but it's playing back too fast. And that is just because of my default setting. So right click here, head over to speed duration and set the speed to 50% to even that out. And now I have a beautifully looking video here. I can also go and copy this clip go to the end of my sequence and paste it in a few more times if I wanted the clip to loop. And now I can do anything that I want, add 
images underneath it in the background, compose something, put it in the background, and then go and render it out when you're ready. It'll depend on the video editor how that works. And that is how we do that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do have any questions about animations, do pop them down in the comments and I'll see if I can answer them. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.